Come and dream with me. Hello, welcome to this What Do You Want to Watch spoiler cast for Pixar's latest film, Luca. I'm Ashley Hobley. Joining me today, Dylan Light. Happy to be here to talk about H.P. Lovecraft's Luca. Don't know that he is very much involved. Uh, okay. But yeah. Please be aware that we were freely discussing anything and everything about the plot, themes, and ending of the film. So if you haven't watched it, come back later. It is currently available to stream on Disney Plus, and unfortunately not in theaters. Bummer. So with that said, let's jump into our discussion of Luca, directed by Enrico Casarosa, screenplay by Jesse Edwards, uh, Jesse Andrews, and Mike Jones, story by Enrico Casarosa, Jesse Andrews, and Simon Stevenson, starring Jacob Tremblay. Jack Dylan Grazer, Emma Berman, Marco Bassielli, uh, Severio, uh, Ro- Romimondo, <laughs> Maya Rudolph, and Jim Gaffigan. Uh, a young boy experiences an unforgettable seaside summer on the Italian Riviera filled with gelato, pasta, and endless scooter rides. Luca shares these adventures with his newfound best friend, but all the fun is threatened by a deeply held secret. He's a sea monster from another world just below the ocean's surface. Uh, Dylan, what did you think of Luca? I thought it was okay. I w- I didn't think it was as good as I. I was kind of let down, to be honest. If I was, if I put it, put it bluntly, I thought it was a pretty fun, but rather empty film that felt like thematically. It was just playing with simple ideas and not that were too interesting when there could have just been so, so much more here. And I felt like the characters, although fine, none of the three kids particularly grabbed me. So I enjoyed it, but I'm also was just very much a in out experience. It looked good. I would have looked better on my on a cinema. I would still would have preferred to have watched it in a cinema, especially the underwater stuff. I thought the underwater stuff was like the most, the prettiest stuff in the in the movie personally. Uh, but overall, yeah, I I I'm, I wasn't blown away, and I thought it was just okay. Uh, I it sounds like I enjoyed it a bit more than you did. I think it was a really uh interesting look at obviously kid friendships. And like those short-lived friendships that kind of have an impact on you for the rest of your life, um, and teach you so much. Uh, I think, yeah, I, I, I don't. I think it obviously lulled a bit. It was like it was kind of going through the motions, like telling a pretty basic story of these three kids who come together and are trying to win this uh, triathlon, which doesn't involve running. Instead, it involves eating pasta because it's Italian. Uh, 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 but do you know I think it hits the emotional moments and the like high moments towards the end of the film it all nails and got me got me right at the end as well and it got me a bit teary eyed when just boarding that train uh, <laughs> but yeah I, I, I enjoyed it I think um, yeah it's not Pixar's best but it's definitely still very good um, very beautifully animated uh Especially the underwater stuff, obviously. It looks incredible when you go to think back of all the... How they would struggle to water effects. Or well, they just avoided water for several years. <laughs> starting out doing 3D animation. It's hard not to compare this to The Little Mermaid since it's based, It's a very similar... Yeah. Rather similar story, I guess, in, in some ways. To a certain degree, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I I'm, I wasn't expecting you to be kind of middling on the film, really. So I'm not sure where to go from here. It's, it's like I, I I look. I went into it wanting. To, I thought I actually went into this like thinking I was going to like it more because I'm like fish monsters, sea hiding out in village. I remember watching that first trailer they put out and thinking it looked like a fun, exciting time. But yeah, so <laughs> I don't really know. Like I don't like if I was giving a score. I don't know. I'll see. Were you expecting like it to be bigger just... because it is? It's kind no, of a small uh, scale, really. It's it is a small scale story, and that's not the problem. I just think the problem is that 
Like when I just don't think there's anything particularly interesting that this movie is doing, which is fine because it's 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 fine to just have a fun movie or whatever. But I'm like, when you think about the idea of like, I feel like in the past they've even been doing things like when you think about Coco, right? Which is currently like if I'm thinking about recent Disney or Pixar films that are big scale and whatever. Coco was not only this stunning movie, but it also had a lot to stay, say and had all these interesting themes and characters all played out throughout that movie. And it was just really, really interesting to watch. And you like, you could rewatch it and get all these new takes and stuff and it introduced you to a new um, culture that maybe you weren't uh, acquainted with and all this sort of stuff. And like this movie, I just feel like it's just paint by numbers to a degree which feels weird because it's not set in america where usually disney movies are set and it's got these sea monsters but i'm just like i feel like all of the elements in this movie are just so underutilized and they don't really get used interestingly i don't feel like the the city is even as alive as maybe it, it could feel like that i just feel like even the city itself this small town um fishing village or whatever like lacks a lot of character i felt like the villain was rather boring not even like he i didn't find him like you know how disney movies usually have like fun exciting villains that you sort of love to hate i just thought he was annoying and i didn't even like want to love to hate him i just just like you're kind of just annoying i don't really like gravitate towards you um like uh, the girl what's her name juliana i remember her name too juliana like julia yeah sorry julia yeah like she was fun but again i felt like her character had very little to it like when you when you take away the fact that she wants to win this race like her entire plot just becomes about self-serving to the um whatever the main character's name is who i've already luca right yeah the name of the movie <laughs> like her <laughs> but you know what i mean like i guess to a certain degree i mean she's also <laughs> doing a thing where she's never really had it seemed like she's never really had friends at least during her time in that town that she goes to spend with her dad, you know, so getting to bond with these two other people. Um, Luca obviously has never had any friends, it seemed like, has pretty much been a sheltered boy. He's a fish herder. He's, yeah, he's a sea shepherd. <laughs> yeah, sea shepherd. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> one. Uh, and then I think obviously you got Alberto, who's kind of that deserted child. Um, well, so kind of- his dad left him or like ran away or got killed or something. But again, that's another plot thread where I'm just like, man, this could have been, they could have done so much more. There was, there was never really a big, I think it was very big, subtle like, and maybe too subtle. Yeah. I, Cause the, what the, the biggest scene we have for that is literally when Luca goes back to the castle or whatever you want to yeah. call it, the tower to talk to him about it and he explains that his dad left him but then literally like 30 seconds later Luca's right like, all right no problem i'm gonna go win this race bro see you later you know i'm like okay well that was like for the emotional us. high of that for us. that whole arc yeah i know but it wasn't you know what i mean like it was very no, yeah, quick like there's no it's just no well, there's, of brevity or, you know like, he, Luke, alberto was also very jealous through the uh, the entire film of his relationship with julia no other thing i want to bring up yeah is that so in the lead up to this movie, I saw some, because uh, obviously the director and everyone's been doing his interviews lately, mm. and uh, Enrico Cas- Casaro- Ca- Casarosa, Casarosa yeah. right? First feature, um, it's done shorts or whatever. Did the Oscar uh, winning about how, yeah. yeah. Talking about how in recent interviews, big Ghibli fan um, movie, this movie sort of inspired by Ghibli films, called The Town, Porta Rosa, or so, I think that's yeah. what it is, Porta Rosa. So, that so right. obviously a, a take Porco on Porco Rosso. Rosso. You get it. Big Ghibli person fan. I'm going to say, if this is the, like this sounds really mean, but if this is your take on what a, if you think this movie would please Hayao Miyazaki, you know, like, I'm going to, no, no. I, Hayao Miyazaki would find this movie very vapid and boring. I'm going to say that right Whoa, now. Whoa, like, that is very, I'm just gonna put I don't think there. you would. I reckon he would find this movie very vapid and very boring, which is fine because Disney movies aren't Ghibli movies, and that's just as simple as it is. Ghibli movies aren't Ghibli. like if you want to compare this to another Ghibli movie. Here's the the, the the biggest comparison. The closest Ghibli movie this is is Ponyo, right? 
That's what this movie yes. is. If you want to compare it to a Ghibli movie, it's Ponyo. They're not exactly the same, mm. but that is the closest Ghibli movie you would. Well, yeah, because they both involve like. a lot of water. G- Ponyo is about a kid escaping uh, the water who has a family member trying to track them down to return them to the water. I know they play out quite differently, but just on the basis, trying to escape, they end up finding a friend, living with the friend. That movie ends up playing with so many different ideas, be it like to do with the environment and friendship. and like It plays with the same ideas that Mist Movie does. It does them better while also exploring different themes, including like vi- environmental issues and and whatever else. And I like, sounds like like I feel like I'm attacking the movie, but at the same time, I just can't help but feel like, especially after reading those interviews, after I finished the movie, I'm like, I don't know, just it just that's my thing. That is my review. The movie just feels so it's empty. It's a fun watch. I would I would not be in a rush to watch it again. There you go. I, honestly, I think I'd give this movie like a five or a five point five. Now, wow. the, the more I'm talking about it. Interesting. Uh-huh. Uh, so you didn't like any of the kids? <laughs> no, I, I thought that I didn't dislike them, but I didn't like like them. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, when I'm just like, they, they, I watched the movie. They were characters that were in said movie. I didn't, I forgot their names already. I, I'm not going to think about them. They're not going to like be, di- you think about so many classic Disney movies, you think about these classic characters or Pixar movies or anything else. Like the, none of the characters in this movie are characters that, I, I guarantee no kids are going to remember these characters. I, no way. No one's going to remember. No one's going to be like, Luca, I want to put a Luca doll in my bed to sleep with because I love Luca. Look forward to 17 happen. Luca moves coming up. It's, it's not going to fucking happen. I'm telling you right now, it's not going to happen. The best person in this movie is Sasha Cohen and Bo and Baron. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha Baron Cohen's uncle character. He gets the transfer. about 120 seconds. <laughs> the trans- well, I loved it. <laughs> God, uh, <laughs> interesting. I would, I would have been interested if they'd have spent a little bit more time, like in that underwater world. I would, have, I would have loved that. One because it would have looked beautiful. Two, they they set up some interesting ideas. One that they're shepherding fish. I don't know for what purpose. I don't know. Just cause. Just cause uh, th- they don't seem to be eating the fish. Because their meals seem to be like all seaweed and salads and stuff. Uh, yep. His dad is super into crab shows, like show, do, raising prize crabs. <laughs> give us Where that. Give us that short. If you're going to do a short for this film, it better be underwater. Wait for them to announce a six episode, three minutes each miniseries for Disney Plus. I mean, they, they that's what they're doing now for Disney Plus. They extend the worlds. Yeah. Do you see that chipmunk thing came through press release? I've never yeah. heard of it. There's like a chipmunk series coming. It's like six episodes, Chip- like no. a couple yeah. minutes each or whatever. Yeah. It's all right, sure. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed the the parents played by my Rudolph and Jim Gaffigan trying to find yeah, Luca and just that fun. scarring all these Killing children. Kids. Yeah, I was about to say, literally just. Destroying kids, to the yeah. point where when they drive riding their bikes up this hill, they don't want to accept water from them, <laughs> even though they're yeah. probably thirsty as anything. Yeah. And that one kid who like walked into frame, heard that ice cream that got thrown into the ocean the first time, <laughs> just like runs away instantly. <laughs> it was quite funny. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, shout out to the Julia's dad. Loved him. He was great. He was quite good. Yeah. yeah. You know, he reminded me of for a Ghibli character. Yeah. Um, the from uh the big like macho dude in uh, Kiki's Delivery Service. Yeah, I was about to say that the the baker. That's who it yeah. reminded me of the baker. Yeah, yeah, very similar. Yeah, super nice guy. Yeah, and I and he was the one to accept the sea monsters first. You know? He was. It was very sweet. It's true. Yeah, I thought it was a sweet film. I, yeah, again, I don't think it's top tier Pixar, but uh, I thought it was. It's better than a five. <laughs> Did you not five, feel five anything score. when they hug at the end? No, no I didn't. Oh. What would your score be then? Probably like seven, seven point five. Uh, yes, yeah. you know, differences of opinion, I'm, people. I'm, you can have I'm them. Glad it's fine. The, the, the bad guy Reviews of people's opinions. The the ultimate comeuppance is not they ruin his Vespa, but they throw his little scarf in the water, even though it would rain. Piece of shit. Doesn't get wet Does- from rain. As, <laughs> if you're moving at a certain speed, you know, like you, the rain drops. Uh, Fall off oh, you. The other gag I, the other gag I love was his uh, 
the guy he'd got to do the swim, he covered him in olive oil, and then all the sardines started biting him. I don't know, that just... <laughs> that worked for you? Yeah, that worked for me. One of those dumb jokes. <laughs> all right, uh, let us know what you thought of Luca. Are you on board with me and think it's pretty good? Or is all you with Dylan think it's not good? Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, let us know on Twitter by going to explosionnet.com slash Twitter or jump into a Discord at explosionnet.com slash Discord. If you want to help us out, leave us a review. Either on Apple Podcasts or on Podchaser or tell people about the show. Listen to our regular weekly episode. Check out It's About Family. Where we just did our spoiler cast for Fast 9. It's a long one. Um... Yeah, and if you thought this episode was worth a dollar, head on over to our Kofi page, explosionnerd.com slash support and buy us a coffee. Every little bit helps. Thank you very much for listening. Until next time, keep watching stuff, I guess. Put this at the end of the episode. I just want to say that we didn't do a spoiler cast for Raya and the Last Dragon because of uh, real life, uh, like we couldn't line it up. I was on holidays for a week or whatever. Um, so that means that every time we've done a spoiler cast for a Disney movie, I hate them all at the moment. But I just want to put it out there that yeah, Ryan no, the Last you Dragon. You just hate Pixar now. You've turned well, on Pixar. So what I'm going to say is that Cruella and Ryan the Last Dragon, like in my top five movies for the year. So I don't hate all. Right? What, what Pixar movie came out before? <laughs> yeah, right, get the list up. Let's. let's you didn't let's see it onward, did you? I haven't watched onward, so I can't hate it, right? It was the one before would. that. What was the one before that? I want to say Toy Story 4. Okay, Wikipedia, come on, hit it. Hit me. D- 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 hit d- d- me. D- yeah, Toy Story 4. Yeah. Loved it. Okay. Best one in the franchise. See? Yeah. But right. you know what the funny thing about that is? I love it, best one in the franchise, and that's still a hot take. So either I have a hot take that's like I <laughs> like a mo- dislike a movie that everyone likes, or I really like a movie that everyone else is like, nah, it's not very good. So, yeah. it's okay. Can't win. <laughs> Can't win. <laughs>